Hello again, everyone. We rejoined Faram after a short rest in here in Majula, and now we're on to Harvest Valley. I'm intending to be able to make my way all the way through to the end of the Iron Keep here in this episode, because I'd really like to be able to feed you all at least one great old soul with each episode, but we'll have to see how fast we can progress. Quick run through all of Chloanne's dialogues, just so that she'll move on back to Majula. She's kind of a worthless merchant, except for much later in the game, so it's just nice to get her out of the way and not have to worry about her until she begins selling some really worthwhile stones. Here is one of my favorite areas in Harvest Valley, just because there's so much loot everywhere. It's It really is just a dream for someone like me who wants to just grab everything possible. Especially because there's only about three or four enemies guarding all of it. You can just have a field day running around and picking all this up. Bait him into one of his attacks and he just falls like the giant that he is. There's absolutely no contest there. It's just a very weak enemy. Uh, the only danger that he poses is if you're unable to avoid his attack because it actually does hit you for quite a lot of damage. What's even better is that I can survive a full poison without having to Estus, so that means that I'm just in a very safe position clearing through this whole area because the poison isn't going to be able to kill me unless I take damage somewhere. And because the poison isn't going to kill me, I can come right down here and loot this chest without bothering. The other great thing about the poison is that it immunizes you from getting poisoned again. So if you're coming in to open that chest, you can just pop that open while you're poisoned and you know you're going to be safe because the poison doesn't stack with itself. Just talk to Gavlan here. I already bought everything that I'm going to want from him for now. So once you've spoken to him in both locations, he'll make his final move and you won't have to worry about him for the rest of the game. He'll just be waiting for you over in the doors of Pharos. Did I grab the items over there? Let me run up here and check. Yeah. Yeah, I did a full clear of this area. Now I get to move on to the next two giants. They're only a bit of a tricky area just because there's two of them. Before you actually face them, you want to come up here and grab the hexing urns just because ten urns is a pretty great number and they're really useful for destroying destructible objects like pots that might poison you otherwise. Because I'm not really gonna take too much damage here, I can just pop that Estus to make sure I'm topped off and that a single shot won't kill me. And again, this bandit axe really just eviscerates any sort of enemy at this level of the game. You can just hack away and... <laughs> Such a derpy animation how they die because the overseer on its back kind of falls off and the large giant falls backwards to crush it and it looks really silly if they're on any sort of a unlevel ground the overseer kind of levitates in midair when he's supposed to be lying on the ground waiting to be crushed I could have sworn that I clicked the attack button but didn't recognize my input not that it matters but it's just a little bit annoying open this up and here we are at a bonfire. This is one of the best examples of how silly they were with the bonfires in this game. I mean, you literally have three required enemies, just all those giants in a row, if that, before you get from one to bonfire to the next. It's a very, very short distance, and there's no real reason for it. In Dark Souls 1, each bonfire was really far apart and making it between two felt like a real big uh, accomplishment. You'd made progress and in Dark Souls 2 it's more like okay here here's your next checkpoint and again they're very, just very willy-nilly with them. But they don't feel anywhere near as well planned as they did in Dark Souls 1. Bait him into destroying that little barrier for me. Come on in and swoop up all the goodies. Right over there is the Old Knight Pike and Great Shield. And while the Old Knight Pike is a pretty worthless weapon, 
just because it's got such low durability and its movesets very bland. It's just got a really heavy-handed halberd moveset. The Old Knight Great Shield is at least somewhat interesting. If you actually look at the design on it, it's a very sort of Mayan or Aztec design. It's really cool looking and for those of you who have played through the DLC that might just ring a bell for you. I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna do any spoilers or talk about the DLC just yet, just in case anybody hasn't played through it just yet, but that is something to keep in mind that Hyde, the sinking city that has been abandoned by what I presume to be the lords that fled an Orlando at the end of the first Age of Fire. They have Aztec looking great shields. I mean, I'll let you draw your own connections, but that is that is something that you want to be looking at. Some connections you want to be pasting together in your head. This is the only area in New Game where these guys could pose a challenge, and it doesn't look like they're going to be doing that this time. I can just kill them in one stamina bar, so as long as I make sure they whiff, I can come in and clean them up. And since... I'm up here on the ledge, they have to come at me one at a time. You see, they just have no chance. Walk towards it, bait out the attack, walk backwards, and it's just a rinse and repeat sort of motion here. Oh! You lived. Can't have that. I guess I just missed one of the sweet spots. Probably started attacking a smidge too early, and so he survived, but... It wasn't enough health, and he completely missed again with his only real opportunity, so I come out of that and whole encounter unscathed. This is another really great place. I just kind of like Harvest Valley because the enemies in it are pretty nice to just deal with very simply, and there's just a bunch of loot lying around that you can grab up that just really appeals to me. It feels very satisfying clearing through this area and just grabbing all the stuff that they give you. If I could break the wall, that is. Come on out really quickly. The axe has got a really nice attack for that because it just comes straight down in front of you. Crush that crystal lizard with my axe. And now we've got our second fragrant branch and we'll be able to go through the shaded wood and unlock all of the important um, petrified lion warriors. I'm going to drop down through here. This is only a fading soul, but it puts you on track to uh, head out the proper way if you follow the cave system. Grabs you a simple and spice, and I believe there's a uh, large titanite over here. Yeah, along with a human effigy. Run by these two. I want to bait him into an attack before I grab this. And he'll just attack on his own. Heal up grab chameleon and the soul of a brave warrior and I'm actually not gonna bother killing them just because I would only get poisoned if I stayed around and they're not gonna bother me once I'm back up here because these guys have such low poise you can stagger them incredibly easily and so any sort of real melee weapon is gonna take care of them very quickly just so long as you're not getting swarmed I am going to come over here just because I want the gesture. This one in Enhanced Undead is kind of strange because while he looks like he's trying to guard this area, he is very set in his patrol. It takes him a long time to notice you and even longer to really start paying attention enough to start attacking you. So you can just make really short work of him. I'm not going to actually join the Covenant just because I've not planning on sending my sign down for anything. I don't really need the uh, extra souls or the sunlight medals, and I'm not doing a miracle playthrough. Not to mention the sun sword's not going to be useful for me, so there's just nothing for me in that covenant. Because he got poisoned, I could take him out with a simple swing, as well as just letting the poison damage take care of the rest. And I want to kill these two beforehand, just in case. Hmm? The one annoying thing about these guys is that their shockwave from the hammer blow that they bring out 
actually lingers for a moment, which can sort of catch you off guard if you're trying to come in right after they've swung. I'm not going to enter that offshoot just because all it contains is the Poison Bite Ring, which is actually worthless now that the DLC has given us an improved version. I don't think that's really much of a spoiler. It's just a single bit of loot that you grab is the Poison, ba the poison Bite Ring plus one. And so now this one, especially because I don't really see the need for it here in New Game, at least. So the Poison Bite Ring in that room is just a waste of time. Missed a sweet spot, but he dies. Here we are. Just walk on through, cutting all of these guys down one at a time as they come at me. Gonna fall down here with the plunging attack. More spice. Um, before I actually finish the area up there, you gotta come down here to make sure you grab the loot over here. I've seen a lot of people mess up this jump by trying to actually make it a legitimate jump when all you need to do is get a running start and fall down from a sprint in order to make that landing perfectly every time. I gave that advice to a friend of mine one time but he refused to listen and quickly found out that the poison water down at the absolute floor isn't actually a complete flooring. There's only a small ledge that allows you to grab the Estus Shard I grabbed earlier, and the rest is actually a bottomless pit that will kill you as soon as you jump down. Almost all of that room is not actually flooring, it's just a trap, and so you actually have to come over and jump that. Climb back up the ladder, and then you can resume your way through the level. The last little area is a trap chest three of the beetles down there and one of the hammer hollows so I'm just gonna clear that room really quick the trap chest isn't very important all it's holding is a singular torch but these guys have a tra chance to drop green blossoms and poison moss so I wanna make sure I kill them and he can actually drop a titanite shard or at least give me a few souls if nothing else Grab the torch, and now it's time for arguably the easiest boss in the game. I mean, you would have a very hard time finding someone easier than this. Possibly Dragon Rider. I mean, I did kind of mess up his fight a little bit on this playthrough, but honestly, there's... Did I just... <laughs> easiest boss, guys, immediately gets hit. Okay, I will admit he has a few AoEs that can catch you if you're not paying attention to where you are. But so long as you're trying to fight his back third rather than his midsection or his front half, you should be fine. You see, he always has very frontal attacks. Any sort of rolling attack that he's going to use to attack you if you're at his side is very inaccurate and is heavily telegraphed. Yeah, I definitely missed some of what's her face? Lucatiel's dialogue, so she's not here. Not that I miss her. I didn't really need the uh, steel protection ring that she was going to give me, and I wasn't planning on doing any of her quest line anyway, so it's not really any loss on my part. Just want to spend some of those souls I just grabbed. Let's get some more vitality since... I'm going to need some more equip weight. Oh, goodness. I, I should really start upgrading the uh, adaptability like I said I was going to. I already have one extra set of iframes, but I want to at least get my agility to 95 in order to get a few more. 95 is the point at which you finally hit double digits worth of iframes. And the ideal place to leave your adaptability, I mean your agility, is 105 which will give you a total of 13 iframes for your roll, which is just over half your roll cycle of 25. There's a bunch of information on the iframes and agility and roll cycle online, and you can find most of it with very simple searches either on Reddit or YouTube or wherever you really want to get your content from. Oh, he tried to Estus in front of me, so I got to save a little bit of weapon durability. Otherwise, I wouldn't really have had the time to switch weapon with my fist. 
These guys are so annoying because their poison knives are extremely poise damaging, but when they jump down from there, they, all their poison throwing knives get caught in the wall, so as long as you're making sure to keep your distance, then you can take them out immediately once they've stopped throwing knives. That message may have messed this up, but no. Nope. Okay. That's the pike. I always want to make sure to grab that because I use it to clear the poison statues down in Black Gulch, and I honestly prefer it to the whip, which is another really decent method of clearing all these statues, just because both of them are very long range attacks. Using them in your left hand is a really great way just to clear through all the statues without wasting weapon durability and not having to try and hit them with your fist because the fist is a very poor choice for that just because it's so up close and personal you've got a very high chance of getting hit anyways by any of the poison statues that happen to shoot out because of your proximity immediately light that I'm sure that you all know that's there at this point but it still just makes the entire level easier. It stops a certain rotor from spinning. It clears up some of the poison in front of the boss room. It clears out almost all of the poison from the boss room. It changes the ferrous lockstone contraption all the way at the top there to give you healing water instead of poison water. It's just infinitely superior method of going through the level than not burning that. The only trick is learning it's there and once you have your golden. Admittedly on my first playthrough I <laughs> was having incredible difficulty with this boss until I just decided to look it up because I knew, I knew they wouldn't make an entire boss room that was covered in cloying, slowing poison water. I mean that is just such an unfair setup. Not only are you walking slower, rolling slower, but the entire boss fight, you're taking poison damage? That's, it, it was preposterous. You couldn't do it in, unless you were extremely skilled at the game, and I was still getting used to all the new mechanics and systems because, again, this was my first run of Dark Souls 2. And so, yeah, I, I honestly had to look up that you could burn that, but once I did, I managed to clear through fairly easily. As you saw, I just quickly bypassed Gilligan. Uh, there is a mirror shield above us if you actually ride that platform upwards, but I'm not using shields, and it kind of alerts these next enemies to my presence, and I want to get the drop on them instead of having that happen, so I'm going to ignore it. Oh, he comes up and tries to defend her, but he is way too slow for that come up and get all the sweet spots for the kill and one quick heavy attack for the trade. Ah, oh, that's really frustrating. These uh, desert sorceresses do have a chance of using really strong up-close pyromancies such as combustion or a unique uh, five fireball toss that they have and if you get hit in the face it basically is a guaranteed death but I was banking on the fact that I was going to get the kill shot before she actually attacked because I have the ability to one-shot her, and as you can see, all did not go according to plan, so I'm going to have to redo that. Since I am coming back this way, I might as well grab the mannequin, not the mannequin, but the uh, mirror shield. It is just sitting there in a chest, and we all know how weak I am against such things. Uh... As for that deal I made with Gilligan, it was a quick 2,000 souls for him to set up a ladder, and after talking with him about that, he'll move on to Majula. That ladder is actually one of the most worthwhile purchases in the game, because for those simple 2,000 souls, you gain access to not only a Ferris Lockstone, but also a Twinkling Titanite. A combined value of over, like, exactly 19 thousand souls if you're buying those from merchants because uh, Cloan, the stone trader will actually sell Twinkling Titanite later on in the game for 15,000 souls and of course the first uh, lockstone you can access at all is the one that 
Melentia sells for 4,000 souls. So, he really does give you a bargain there. Almost all of his ladders are extremely worthwhile. The only one that I wouldn't rate is his $5,000 ladder. I mean, not $5,000, $500 ladder that he sells over in Majula, just because I think that every character should get the silver cat ring in order to head down into the gutter. It's not absolutely necessary because you can use Laddersmith Gilligan's ladders to clear all the areas down there, but the silver cat ring comes in so handy in so many other areas as well that you really want to grab that instead. Now that I've talked to Pate here, he will move on to the uh, duel event over in Brightstone Cove, and I can completely forget about him until I make it there. I want to kill her before I grab my souls, just to make absolutely certain she doesn't try any funny business. Wilted Tusker, they have a chance of dropping several really nice items or some kind of crappy items. They can drop dragon charms, which are just stronger versions of the monastery charm. As you can see, they have the wilted herb. They also have their entire armor set, and most importantly, is the lingering dragon crest ring plus one. As opposed to the regular one, it lasts makes your uh, item your spell cast last for that much longer and it's available without spending any souls or uh, completing the ridiculous requirements necessary to get the plus two version of that ring. Come on over here. You want to break those poison pots with your hexing urn or any sort of lobable uh, weapon just so that you can make sure you don't activate them yourself because if you activate two of those pots by rolling through them that will be enough poison build up on you to make sure you get poisoned and then you're gonna have to bother with that. These two sorceresses are really easy because any sort of throwing attack or range attack is going to knock them back the little ways into the poison jars behind them and they will die in that single poison jar. Oh, gonna drop down on me and make this difficult. That's what you get for making it difficult. Up here, I'm actually going to switch my weapon, just because I want to conserve some of that durability, because honestly, I'm going to go straight into the boss fight after this. I don't really need to rest at the bonfire up here. So, I'm going to use this really quick and strong moveset just to get the damage on him. See, it staggers him every time, just because it's the really powerful hammer moveset, and he's only wearing the brigand set, so he has no real poise. Anything you do against him is going to stagger him, whether it's a dagger or a hammer or a, a great sword. Grab the petrified something and activate the bonfire that's over here. It's really nice because it's right above the path to the boss herself, so you can just activate that and have that waiting for you. Even if you fail the fight and need to come back to this area, the run back is just absolutely pathetic. There's, It's just right there, and you get to come right back into the fight and try it over again. Break my way through there. An entire group of these things. It's like they're multiplying. Hmm. So much for that idea. Come on over here and get the double kill. You can really see how you're supposed to manipulate the move set of the uh, hammer or mace class weapons in groups like this. Just turn your side to them and swing away. You will clear through them so quickly and almost all of them will be staggered every single time. It doesn't really work that way in real life, but this certainly isn't real life by any stretch. I didn't unequip one of the throwing knives because I can use one of them to aggro a single one of these wardens so that I don't have to deal with both of them at once. Now that I've got him out of the way, it's a very simple uh, walk right on through to the boss fight. As you can see, this is a very popular place for Sun Bros because this is the second fight, boss fight right after the Sun Bro altar, and the first fight really doesn't need any summons. 
We've also got everyone's favorite jester, Tarkus, over here. But as fun as he is, I'm not going to bother. I've got exactly what I need to make this fight my own, and I'm just going to run right into it. Yep, just wanted to make sure I was human for it, for the fashion souls aspect. I can see the little buff that shows me I'm, I have increased soul gain, so I'm ready to kill the boss. Not even going to bother with a weapon buff, because... Oh. I was like, are we are we going to fight here or just dance? Because her moveset is really pathetic, and... Oh. I want to walk away when she does that. But she does give you a chance to get some free damage if you don't get in front of her, like I accidentally did. She will sometimes back off and use some ranged attacks, but... It's of no matter. She always comes back in and lets you get a bunch of free damage off because she uses really long, lunging, sweeping attacks that just leave her so open when she whiffs, as she inevitably will. That's the only attack that I kind of dislike because you have to know she's doing it and roll twice in order to avoid it. At least with uh, the follow-up attacks, she shows you with a new telegraph that she's going to keep going at it. I'm roll out of there. Wait for her to slide on up. And this is the kill. It's a very simple fight. Not much to it. Gets you a little bit of souls, and all it really serves is to be a gatekeeper fight for the uh, Old Iron King's Keep that we're heading on to now. Because... At the peak of Earthen Peak, there's an elevator that goes up that leads to a castle where you can't see the Earthen Peak anymore. It makes perfect sense. Perfect sense, yeah. <sighs> it's, it's just one of the little gripes that I have about Dark Souls 2. It didn't carry the torch from Dark Souls 1 of keeping very connected and sensical level design is just kind of through certain levels together. Some people try and cover the game's butt by saying that it's the curse of hollowing. You're just kind of forgetting the areas in between levels, but that's just an excuse and everyone knows it. I'm considering whether I should head back to Majula, but I'm not gonna. I'm pretty sure I can clear this area without too much trouble, so I'm going to be a little bit cocky and just head on without bothering to spend these souls. I also have an Estus Flash Shard that I could use to upgrade that. Oh! Well, I was really paying attention there. Rolled way too early for that. I've got the Estus Flash Shard that I could use to give myself a little bit more Estus in this area, but I'm probably not going to need it, or at least hopefully not going to need it. I'm actually pretty used to facing these guys because I just got done playing around on a full dagger character, so I've gotten really used to rolling around behind them and backstabbing them or just locking them to death in the quick dagger attacks. Oh. And for all my skill, not paying attention is going to be the death of me. It's just how the game works. If you're not paying attention, you're gonna die. That's what you pay for. And that is why you play Dark Souls. To have a game that's going to engage you. Otherwise, you're going to die. And you don't want to die, so you remain engaged. You remain focused. You're always paying attention to what's going on. You're thinking about how you can kill the next enemy, combat the next encounter, foil the next trap. That's what's so great about Dark Souls. Is No matter what you're doing, you have to remain engaged with the game. You have to pay attention. Otherwise, you are going to meet an untimely demise over and over and over again because even the trash mobs, even these simple enemies that appear throughout the game that really just fill out the levels they're powerful, they can kill you if you're not paying attention, if you make the wrong move overjudge your stamina, mistime a roll they're gonna hit you and you're gonna have to suffer for that come over here this guy is one of my favorite merchants not only because he sells the jester set which I absolutely adore. Special effect on every single bit of it. I mean, what's not to love? He also sells all of these, but the really important thing is that he allows you to uh, use your incense to 
Spice down spells, and once you've spent 10,000 souls with him, you get the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring plus one, which raises the enemy's drop chance by 75%. 75%, people. That means they are three times as likely, three times out of four, more likely to drop a bit of loot. I mean, that is absolutely wonderful. Slap on any sort of other item increasing a uh, bit of equipment, and you're basically going to be rolling in the drops. That was a little bit of a sloppy encounter, but it's going to be a real quick jaunt over here to kill the archer and not have to deal with him anymore. The Great Arrow uh, Alon captains here are just so annoying, but luckily there's only a few of them, and you can abuse the columns in this area to deal with most of the incoming fire that is gonna ruin your day. Hmm. Thought he was gonna fall off. But no. I believe this is a Twinkling Titanite. And a Life Ring plus one. Arguably one of the worst rings in the game, but... Hey, who's here to judge? It gives you about 10%, 12%, one of the two, extra life, and... If you just have ring slots to spare, you might as well. I mean... I can't imagine any reason you would equip that unless you were just on the cusp of being one-shot by a boss and wanted to get that little bit of extra and didn't have any souls to level up your vigor. I mean, that really is just the long and the short of it. This is the Alon Knight that I'm talking about. So long as you get within his aggro range and then just walk right back, he falls to his death into the lava below every single time. There's something about the uh, slant on the ladder not the ladder, but the um, bridge that really messes with his AI, and he will consistently just walk into oblivion. It's kind of a habit for him at this point. This is a really tricky area, but I've kind of developed a system that gets me through without getting hit by great arrows every time. Roll in here, and there you have it. You've just dropped down the bridge, and you're ready to take on Smelter. I do want to come up here just because he is guarding something. Roll right on through and lock him to death. What is he guarding exactly? Just a life gem and green blossom. You can actually completely skip Smelter Demon, but I want the Ring of Blades as well as I don't want to skip an optional boss that's just right here. If he was far out of my way and had a really terrible run back every time, then I would probably skip him just like I'm skipping the uh, gargoyles and what's what I call it the executioner chariot but the smelter demons a really worthwhile boss that I kind of like even though he's got a very high chance of killing me I still want to face him cover your stamina for the sprint come over here and every giant dad's favorite weapon sitting here there's a guaranteed one in every playthrough it's glorious the Zwei Hander. Can't get it anywhere near as early as you could in Dark Souls. Oh, oh, <laughs> I almost missed that jump. You got really worried there for a second. You can't get it anywhere near as early as you can in Dark Souls 1, but you still get a guaranteed one, and you can get some from Brightstone Cove through some of the spiders, so you can even dual wield them in this. It's pretty great. You could activate this with a Ferris Lockstone in order to it to give you healing water, but I'm never coming back there, so it's not worth it. I did pick up the Dole Ember down there, which is the real reason you want to head down, and that is going to be extremely useful once I uh, actually... You know what? It actually might not be useful. I was going to say it's extremely useful because it unlocks uh, Blacksmith Macduff as a blacksmith, but that might actually not be important because I don't really think I need to infuse anything and neither do I need a source of infinite un I mean infinite large titanite which is what I would normally use them for since I've got a very specific set of weapons I'm using while he's buffing himself he takes extremely reduced damage so you, the best idea is to start hitting with poison throwing knives because the poison buildup remains the same but the damage he's taking 
is far less, so this is just the best use of your time. It takes about four or five, I forget which. And, oh, dear. One strategy you can use is, oh, getting crushed because you're caught healing. <laughs> I was going to explain that one strategy you can use to combat his consistent burn is to pop a life gem or two so that you're constantly healing up as the fight progresses, but I didn't get that opportunity. Because this might be a little bit of a scary run back, let's equip the Ring of Life Protection. Just to be absolutely certain that I don't encounter any problems on my way over. Because the Unlaw Knights are fairly unforgiving foes, and they drop a lot of souls, so after you've full cleared the area, you don't want to lose your souls to Smelter, because that's going to be a hefty chunk of soul memory that just got wasted there. And especially if you're going through a new game, every bit of soul memory counts. You want to make sure all the souls you're gaining are actually being put into your character or into your weapons, so that you're not left with a higher soul memory than you have to have. Oh. There we go. I didn't need the stone ring here anyways. All the weapons I'm going to be using are strong enough to stagger these guys without it. So it's not going to be an issue. Take him out, run through. Oh, he didn't pop down? Fine. I'll just come around. The backstab on these sorts of really heavy but short weapons is really satisfying. It's just a very solid blow to the back of the head as you knock them to the ground, and it's always really great. I want to ditz around here a little bit so that he gets out of range of the great archer over there. Aggro him and once again come back, just because that great archer is going to be consistently plinking away at me, and I don't want to deal with any of that. Once you've walked onto the bridge, he will come over, and you can take him out. As you can see, this little pillar here, well, I, technically it's a buttress holding up pillars, but that's besides the point. I don't think anyone's really going to call me out on architectural intricacies on this, so... You can aggro all of them and drag them over there behind the uh, buttress so that you can take them out in peace. Let's rebuff. I'm not going to bother with the, uh, whatchamacallit, the red burr, because I'm, I want the additional stamina regen that the green blossom has to offer, as opposed to the slightly higher fire defense of the burr. Grab these souls. Yeah, 48,000 souls. That would have been a crying shame to lose. I think I can actually make him buff just by swinging, yeah, four times. That's how powerful this axe is with the uh, buff. One, two, three, four. Yep. Once the 15 shows up, you know you've po Oh. <laughs> I was trying to heal up, and I accidentally unequipped my weapon, which took out my buff. I knew he was using a really long overhead attack there, so I was free to actually heal, because he wasn't going to be able to follow it up anytime soon. And now I can hop away. What I really wanted to do is a jumping overhead attack, because that leaves him fairly vulnerable afterwards. I don't want to be at distance like this just because he has certain moves that can come out really quickly. And I do want to heal, but the fight's almost over. Uh, here's where it gets dicey, because a single failed roll is going to be my death. But he got a little bit too forward with his moveset, and I got the kill. That's him out of the way, and that's all of his souls for me. I'm not going to head back to Miljula just yet, because I want my... Ring of Blades plus one. Though I am going to rest here just to make sure my axe isn't break and refill all of my Estus. Because that would be a very dicey fight indeed if my axe broke. I don't actually intend to get hit, but again, better safe than sorry as Souls is designed around. Let's see. 
I suppose just the Royal Soldier's Ring will be best here because, again, I don't intend on staggering him. And this will give me slightly longer rolls and more stamina recovery. Just because the lower your percentage of weight capacity is, the higher stamina recovery is, as I explained earlier in the playthrough. Just bait all, out all of his attacks. His moveset hasn't changed. Just his health numbers and damage. Oh, <laughs> you could get greedy and get punished for it, but I highly recommend against it. It's generally considered to be bad form. Again, his moveset and uh, AI haven't changed. It's just his damage numbers and health. I wish he would start using more attacks like that that leave him open to that three or four hit combo, but he seems a little bit reticent at the moment. It's like he wants to live longer or something. <laughs> you can spam that move all you want, but I'm just going to dodge it every single time. Come in and get... Oh! There's that stab attack. Oh, got lodged in his shield. Oh! Well, this is dicey. Oh, really? That was a very, very quick wind-up for that. I'm not doing too good right now, people. But, we must press on. I've got a bunch of souls down there that I'm not leaving behind. And he still has his Ring of Blades one plus one that I still need, so... We've got to do it again. I'm not going to bother he human <laughs> making myself human via an effigy just yet, because... Again, this fight shouldn't have been a threat in the first place. That's that's the wind-up he's supposed to have on that move. Not that incredibly quick spinning slash he did. I don't know what happened there, but... Yeah, that's what I was expecting him to do. Don't know how he switched up his moveset, but... It was frustrating to see that come out. This is how the fight's supposed to go. He gives me plenty of opportunities to... Uh, walk around behind him and get free swings off, as opposed to this consistent uh, just slashing at me thing that he was doing earlier. Now he's doing those running thrusts and overhead twirls that just allow him to take so much extra damage that he doesn't need, and even the thrust attack that right there. See, that was a perfect fight, whereas the first time he was really abusing his moveset and I wasn't prepared for it, so I kind of ate his sword for breakfast. <laughs> Not exactly the optimal way to take him on, but we managed it in the end, and now I've got over a hundred thousand souls to take back to Majula. Time to spend some of these stones that I've been grabbing on upgrades, and I've got some, what you call it, level ups to tack on. I know I got at least one Titanite chunk, and the Blacksmith's Hammer should be able to yeah, get that all the way up to plus six. And I am going to be tagging that one in for at least a portion of this level because the Ironclads are extremely weak versus blunt damage as opposed to any other sorts of damage. Use my Estus Flash Shard. God, look at that hollow face. It's disgusting. It's not at all bacony. I don't know what they were thinking. Get my Vitality all the way up. Now time for that adaptability that I was talking about so I can start rolling properly. <laughs> can I get it all the way up to 100? No. But I can get it to 95, and I'll, I guess I'll leave it there for now. I don't need it too much higher than that, but I, I kind of want it to at least hit 100 sometime, eventually. I'll focus on that next time I have a large sum of souls to come back at it with once more over to the old iron keep human myself up before I head through the door and I'm ready to press onwards there's a little Alon captain waiting for you just outside but he doesn't bother trying to fight you with a bow like a little pansy from earlier in the level cough cough not looking at you or anything but uh... he is quickly dispatched Swap out to the blacksmith hammer. Want to dispatch this guy as quickly as possible, just so that uh, the one behind him oh doesn't get a chance to knock the platform down. 
or he can, but, uh, okay, that's good. A quick two swings is enough to take them out, so that's nice. Depending upon how that Elon Knight aggros, you can actually get him to travel over there and, oh, <laughs> travel over there and get caught when you drop that, ah, oh, just out of range, and that would have been the chunk that I was really looking for. But, um, you could get him to run along the platform to the, uh, area where the two ironclads were waiting and fall into the lava with them when you lower the platform. But no such luck this time. What I am actually going to do is ignore him for at least this next moment and open this door. Inside there's a Ferris Lockstone contraption that opens up this wonderful this wonderful little secret door which in turn leads to a new bonfire why would they give you another bonfire right next to a bonfire that you just unlocked well that's anybody's guess but it probably has to do with the fact that up there lies the belfry soul which i'm not going to do anything with this time just because there is nothing for me up there i have no reason to head up there it's just all bad i am gonna rest at the bonfire and for those of you who don't know you can actually get down to the regular level again even if you're if you've already come up here by just sprinting off in this direction your momentum will actually carry you forward and you can resume the level as normal as well as tag the bonfire for later so you don't need to warp anywhere and you can just come right on down. I rested just because I wanted my Estus Basque back. Oh. And those two ironclads in there won't aggro once you've passed them up. So I don't need to deal with them. And it gives me a second chance at this crystal lizard. Like that. The one sad thing is that now that archer's back up in action, but oh, that was a very piss poor idea. Mess that up royal. I don't know why that's happening. That's the second or third time today that it's just taken control of my lock on and made me try to lock on to an enemy that I was not moving my stick to. Sometimes this controller gets a little bit wonky, especially with the oh oh god. The setup I'm using with my computer, so I'm just gonna chalk it up to that for now. Again, a little bit sloppy, but oh, it's I'm pretty safe at this point. Uh, did I say I was safe at this point? I mean, I'm totally gonna die when my lock on switches targets. I don't know what's going on with that, but I'm gonna press on, and you know, maybe I'll just give you an example of some of that good old unlocked combat that I'm so proud of. I don't want to waste the Estus that I would have to use if I actually made the fall down from the Belfry Soul, so let's actually go around the right way. It's a little bit frustrating, but it'll give me a chance to show you what the Mace can do again versus those Ironclads if I'm not being a little pansy. Because the first time I highly underestimated my damage. <laughs> Please no. Please no. Please stand up that way. Yes, there we go. I was extremely worried that my character was going to be an idiot and stand back up into the lava. Luckily, he had an ounce of sense and allowed me to come right up and finish him off. Really want to pull this very quickly, and he's not going to let me. But, yeah. This, this place is actually getting kind of frustrating. I mean, I usually don't have this much difficulty, but... There's been a confluence of flactors that have really been messing up my day. <sighs> I was expecting him to come into range. Goodness. Let's just clear the level, and then we can be done with it. I'll make sure this guy doesn't try and get any pot shots off as I'm climbing the ladder. This guy either. Both of them will aggro and start plinking away at you if you just go up the ladder without clearing them out. Wait for him to fire a zero. And just some Elon Knight leggings. What's this? Just a soul. 
kind of worthless, but free souls. Who's complaining, right? Come on up here. I'm going to switch to my bandit axe just because I want as much DPS as possible for this guy. And he's equally weak to slash and blunt, so it's not like you need to specifically be using a blunt weapon against him. There are several mimics in this game, but the teeth on their model make them extremely obvious. If Even if it's your first playthrough, as long as you're paying attention to the chests, you, you really should be able to tell what is and is not a mimic. It's a little bit frustrating, but there's nothing to be done about it now. FromSoft has already released the game. They're not going to change the entire Mimic chest model just because it's obvious and I complain about it, so might as well just get used to it and play with the game I've been given. Come on around. I always want to be constantly circling around and never remaining in the same place for too long when you're facing these Grapo wielders because they will track you slightly, so you want to make sure that you're just realized that I'm not human yet. They will track you, so you want to make sure that you're constantly moving and constantly abusing their predictive AI, making sure they try to shoot ahead of where they think you're going before you switch direction. Come on down, switch back to the mace, hammer, combo, whatever you want to call it. It's classified as a hammer, and it is the blacksmith's hammer, but it's it's the moveset that I familiarize with the mace because of the cleric and the magic mace both being my first encounters with the mace in this game so that's what I am gonna remember it as you don't actually have to fight him you can come over here and roll away and he will fall to his death you could fight him if you wanted his drop but it's unlikely that he had anything I wanted I already have the leggings, and I'm pretty sure the gauntlets as well, so there was nothing that he could give me that was going to be worthwhile. The only other things I could even possibly want from uh, these Elon Knights is the Captain Armor, Captain Helm, and the Great Bow. Because I don't have a Great Bow just yet, so that might be a good item to snag. You don't want to grab that item just yet. You can turn off the fires up here, and then you can pick it up. It's just a lightning short bow, but it's the strongest free bow that you can grab, and it's useful for using the poison arrows I've grabbed from Gavlan. Come right on up. It's just a pretty nice, cool, decorative area. Attack the bonfire, because we're also right next to the great old one. Get all my Estus back. Repair my weapons keep the hammer equipped at least for this one next enemy because there's one last ironclad in the level that I'm gonna have to clear to get to the boss and that lever will turn off all the fire spouts if you remember there was also one fire spout at the very beginning of the level that was covering an item while it is possible to grab that item with the, fout, the uh, spout still going it's a very dangerous prospect and there's no point in risking it especially because I don't actually want that key. It unlocks the door all the way back in um, right before the last giant's boss room and the only thing that's behind that is the fire lizards that you see earlier in the level and Rain's, uh rebel shield which is a good tower shield for defending against all sorts of elemental and dark attacks but it's nothing that I'm going to be using just because again not going with a shield this time around just very strong light quick weapons strength weapons in your face do the damage just walk back Oh, <laughs> something is just going wrong every single time ah I don't know what is up with that, but I don't want it to continue. It's getting kind of annoying. But yeah, if you get caught by that attack, especially because he's coming from the right-hand side, you've got a very nice chance of just slipping into the brink, the, <laughs> the drink right there. And believe me, lava is not your friend. Let's bring out the uh, blacksmith's hammer again. I'm just going to leave it equipped this time, just in case I, once again have an unfortunate mishap, let's say. 
because clearly I am not invincible as much as I would like to tell you otherwise. Certain enemies can kill me, and especially vi environmental hazards have a uh, very good chance of that as well. Like, you set me anywhere near lava and I'm already on edge. I don't even bother with the jumping puzzles that are early in the level for a bunch of free items. And as a secretor and a lootor, that should really tell you how much I dislike the lava. Come on in through here. Grab my souls really quick before he jumps up onto the lava. And now we're ready to face him again. You can't actually poison him with throwing knives while he's... Oh! While he's just kind of waiting there out of your range, but... I don't really think I need the extra damage. Especially because he's playing nice with his moveset this time around and giving me the attacks that I can punish really hard. He also gives you a chance to heal in between each of his attacks if you want to. I'm gonna finally abuse this little L-shaped corner here. The fireballs will never hit you past that, so it's a nice little base to come back to. Okay, he was playing nice, then he decided he didn't want to play nice anymore. A fireball attack really doesn't give us many chances to get damage off. Fire laser, however, leaves his arm laying right there in the middle of the chamber, and I can just swing to my heart's content. Fire laser, like, oh, okay, that wasn't fire laser, but it's just as good for me. That means that this should kill him if I can, if I can land my attack. There, are, there are certain prerequisites to this whole affair. There's my fire laser. Boom. That's how that fight's supposed to go, people. <laughs> That's another great soul embraced. Let's grab the little sublime bone dust over here. Some little cremated saint for all you playing along at home. And another primal bonfire. Gonna head back to Majula, upgrade my adaptability, hopefully be able to upgrade the agility all the way to 100, and then we'll head back out. Pretty soon I'm actually gonna want to start raising my dexterity, as silly as it sounds. I'm gonna need at least 20 before I can wield the, uh, Red Iron Twin Blade effectively, and it's actually not terribly far away. Only two more Great Old Souls, and I'll be able to enter Castle Drang Lake, and right after that comes the Shrine of Amana, where I grab that. Great Adaptability, and that's 100 Agility, everybody. That is my 12th iframe. Once I get that all the way up to 13, at 105, I will leave it there for the rest of the game. I do have another chunk so I can upgrade my blacksmith's hammer and just get them on the same level and finally see which one is technically superior. Let's just give it a nice little check. Oh, let's, let's make them even stronger. Oh! They are perfectly analogous. They will actually have the exact same end damage. It's just a difference in moveset and uh, damage type, so... Oh, before I forget, let's burn that sublime bone dust I just picked up, and that'll be all for today. It's a little bit shorter of an episode, but there were several bosses. We did a really fast clear, and while I did come into a few issues in the last three in the Iron Keep, I'm kind of happy with how this turned out. I'll rejoin you all next time as we head on into the Shaded Woods. See you all.